Well, welcome everyone. Um, um, we have a fascinating uh, CIO panel um, uh, that we'll dive into uh, and try to squeeze the, the potential uh, almost half a trillion dollars into 30 minutes. Um, you know, I remember uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I was. Uh, uh, VAP was just arriving and I was working on a number of uh, building applications VAP based uh, and we were very excited about uh, enabling the enterprise using uh, VAP based menus and, and whatnot. And uh, it, it felt like enterprise uh, mobility was just around the corner. I ended up writing a book on it. Uh, but it took a, a while before um, it truly came into being. Um, but if you look at what's happening in the enterprise now, it's, uh, the progress has been just uh, amazing in terms of adoption, in terms of platform shifts, and that's uh, what we'll uh, dive into. And so we have an excellent um, panel with uh, very experienced uh, practitioners of the trade, um, and we'll go into some specific questions uh, that might help inform your uh, decisions. Um, uh, so we have uh, Nagi Prabhu from um, CA, he manages the enterprise mobility. Uh, Dean Lane, uh, he has been uh, CIO of a number of uh, illustrious companies uh, such as uh, Honeywell, Plantronics, and has been very active in the CIO space for a long, long time. Uh, Sean Wild from uh, uh, Trimble, CIO. Uh, again, a lot of experience in the enterprise uh, and uh, enterprise mobility space. And last but not, not the least, uh, Ashwin Balal, uh, CIO at KLA Tencore, uh, which has been doing some really pioneering work uh, in the space. Uh, so just to get started, I um, wanted to get a quick uh, one word or less answer on what's the biggest opportunity and what's the biggest challenge in enterprise mobility. And maybe, uh, Nagi, you can uh, get us started. All right, so the biggest opportunity is that uh, we are still in the beginning. We are in innings one of uh, mobile. If you think that everybody has uh, a mobile device now, uh, wait till everybody has about 50 of these per person. So I think there's a huge opportunity in front of us. That's what I would say. And what's the biggest cha uh, challenge? And that is the challenge too, because uh, the, the problem that you see today gets multiplied by 50. Hello? Okay. So um, I think one one opportunity or one um, Just really... Just one, one word or less. Oh, one word or less. One, uh, one really good thing is that the, um, the cost of developing these mobile applications is significantly less. The, the uh, thing I would caution about is, is from a security standpoint, it's it's not just the mobile app, but what happens once you get inside the enterprise. So that's a, a big concern. Okay, one word, one word, everything. <laughs> I won't use one word, but it's three words. It's actually the balance between really user experience, security, and privacy. Great. So, um, you know, when we were talking about uh, previous Ashwin, um, you had mentioned um, about the BYOD um, uh, deployment, and this was before BYOD was even the term BYOD. It, it was back in 2010. Um, you see, or decided with the help of your IT group that they're going to do uh, an iPad deployment, 6,000 iPad across the enterprise back in 2010, which was uh, kind of unheard of, and the story kind of started coming out later. Uh, could you just walk us through the decision process, why the company went through that cycle of enabling um, the field force with uh, iPad and what that experience has been like? Like what did it enable the enterprise to do? Actually, uh, uh, thanks. I mean, to, just to give you some, some, some backdrop, I'm, I'm glad that Qualcomm started to kick off the, uh, the keynote here. In fact, uh, KLA 10 Core is in the business of enabling the digital age. Uh, without KLA 10 Core, uh, Qualcomm can't get its chips to the market, right? And so in, 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 in June of 2010, uh, we in KLA 10 Core decided to give uh, every one of our 6,000 employees an iPad. And at that point, uh, people were wondering that this company is crazy. Uh, and today I see the deployments, you know, uh, grow and people are beginning to use it today in 2013. And, and, and our intent at that point is that uh, with the iPad, the amount of silicon that was going to be consumed by that device uh, was going to be driving our business. And what better way for us to endorse that than to give every one of our employees uh, an iPad. And that was given more of as a gift 
which then became a BYOD challenge for the IT organization. And then if you look at the challenges of that, we hear about MDM solutions today. Uh, we implemented an MDM solution in July of 2010 so that we could provision uh, seamlessly the 6,000 devices globally uh, in, in terms of without touch certification. And today, if I look at it and what, what are the lessons learned, is that MDM, while necessary, is not sufficient. Right? So there are a number of challenges. If you, if you think that your, your device is secure with just the MDM solution, uh, I, I think, I think you've got to think a little harder. Uh, and therefore, you have MAM kind of solutions and, and others. And that's why I started my session saying, where there's a threat, there's an opportunity, is that the, it is the balance of giving frictionless user experience coupled with you know, privacy and security. Now, you, know, you talk about BYOD. I'm, I'm, I'm really, it's not about BYOD. It's bring your own network. It's bring your own cloud. It's bring your own video. All right, and it's all on mobile devices today. And how do you manage to that? Sure. Maybe Nagi, you can pick it up from there and, and talk talk a bit about you know as you move from MDM focused uh, you know enterprises to looking at application management and identity management. What yeah. are you seeing in? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think you said it right. The MDM is just the beginning, and it is not by any means uh, close to being a perfect solution. It is a necessary thing. But I think it is not anywhere close to solving all your problems. I think what is happening is that the days of you relying on your PC or the device that the employee has is gone. The days are gone when the network you could rely on. You could say, I can only let these five people to come into my network. Those days are gone. So I think the things are changing where the focus needs to be around ident identity of the person who is coming and using the application or using the accessing the data and it is less about what device he uses or which network or which telco he is coming on. So think about this situation, right? So uh, you go to a bank, the bank doesn't care whether which car you came by, he cares about who you are. And I think establishing that identity of that person who is accessing these resources, regardless of which device he uses, is going to be the most important thing that one can uh, solve today, yeah. right? And the second aspect of that is also data. I think people are thinking about data as something, once you identify yourself, you get the data. I think that is wrong because the data is no longer sitting on the devices that you provision. There, it is no longer sitting in the uh, enterprise networks. It's going all over the place. I have this personal device and I have the data from uh, my company on it. So I think what needs to happen is the data needs to become self-defending, mm -hmm. right? So the data needs to come with its own identity. The user who is using it establishes his identity in a painless way, right? I mean, you don't want to make that identity verification painful. You need to make it very easy. Like when you go to bank, you just give your social security number. Every time you go there, if they ask you to pee in a cup, that's not going to work. It's going to be painful. Yeah. So uh, it needs to be painfully uh, uh, less painful. You identify yourself and the data has self-protective uh, information and they both do the handshake and now you can access any data, any app from any device, any network. I think that is where the industry needs to go and that's how the CIOs need to think is stop worrying about the devices, stop worrying about the network, the identity of so the So the solutions perimeter. that are in the market today, do they allow CIOs to help manage the identity or are there tools that need, need to be built? There are many tools that are available today. Uh, I don't want to talk about CA tools in particular, but we do have a lot of security identity tools and also risk-based tools, right? You don't want to uh, make the identity so hard, but you need to do it based on the risk. Sure. So if the risk of that transaction increases or the risk of the identity is cannot be 100% guaranteed, you take it to the next level yeah. of identity verification. So there are tools available, but there is a long way to go. Uh, to give an example, why should password be or a DMV license be your identity. Yeah. It can be your Facebook. Yeah. It is better to have a Facebook as your identity. It might be uh, controversial, but it is easier to fake a driver's license in the back alley of a, a, a shady place than well, uh, fake your identity on Facebook. There are 500 people telling you who you are and who you are connected, which school you went to. 
which is better than relying on a uh, driver's license, right? So pick up on that, uh, Dean, you have been around a long time in terms of how computing has evolved. Um, so if you look uh, kind of enterprise mobility through, through the platform lens, you know, we used to develop for um, Windows platform for a long, long time. Do you see a shift in um, computing where uh, iOS and Android are becoming more important, or is just um, you know there are going to be three big platforms that everybody is going to develop for? Yeah, so um, that's exactly right, uh, and I agree. Before I get to that, I agree that identity is probably uh, the first level of concern um, because unless you know who it is, you know, then then it's not going to matter. Um, these shifts to Android, to iOS, to all those things um, are going to make it such that the, you know, when you, if you project into the, well, let's go backwards first. So let's take the iPad. When the iPad came out, it was totally worthless um, from the standpoint of, of a device to actually do work on. It was great in terms of information consumption. So it's an information consumption device, but like everything else, it evolves and it becomes more valuable and so on and so forth. Well, the same is going to be true for the question you're asking. It's going to evolve to the point where it doesn't matter whether you're on campus at, within your own company or whether you're in Europe or China or anywhere else, the first level of concern will be who are you? Because, because un unless you're going to shut out the outside world and, and only people on campus will be able to access, you know, if and, and that's just not real. So uh, the first level of concern is who are you, and then um, after that is, you know, what are you authorized to do? And, and I think that you'll see that as we go forward, whether, you know, it'll, it will become ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the security concern is going to be for this device, for that device, and, and I agree, the device won't matter. Yeah. Uh, it will also, you know, I mean, you know yourself, there are programs that access other programs. Well, how do we know that that program's coming, and where is it coming from? You know, how do we know it is what it says it is? So, Sean, that's what I would say. Sean, let's talk about the opportunity in enterprise mobility. When I mean, you guys have de deployed uh, enterprise mobility for your own um, employees and, and workers in how you empower them to do uh, work. What, what have the learnings been in terms of what works and what doesn't work in terms of uh, providing access to information uh, to the employees through mobile devices? Wow, what a big question. So what works? Nothing. What doesn't work? Everything. <laughs> so those are my simple answers. You know, 11 years ago, we were deploying Wi-Fi, and 11 years ago, if you had a laptop, you were a privileged employee. If anyone knows what's going to happen in the next 11 years, I'd love to know because I want to invest in a few company stock. If we go at the pace we've gone in the last 11 years, I don't think any of us can predict what's going to happen in the next 11. I've had meetings with people who tell me that every single employee should have an iPad and that's it. And I go, wow, that's going to be really hard on the data entry people who have to do 120 words per minute. And those people usually get forgotten out. So, What's going to happen is we're going to evolve at multiple different rates. If my bank tells me that everyone in the bank's going to Android, I will probably find a new bank. Sorry, I don't believe Android's secure enough. Maybe in 10 years, but not right now. When my bank tells me that everyone in their banking network is going to be wide open and they're going to get rid of all their firewalls, I definitely will go find a new bank. So what works? A lot of things work. A lot of information is portable, but a lot of information isn't portable, and I, don't, and I think the issue is what doesn't work is people are trying to take data which can't protect itself, which is inappropriate to be on a portable device or on a mobile device or outside of the four walls of the company, and they're taking it outside of the four walls of the company. So I actually am positive about the social change that has to happen over the next decade because IT can't own this problem. IT can help with the technology, but IT cannot decide what information has to be self-defending, what information can leave the company, and what information has to stay in the company. And I think IT groups that fool themselves into believing that they have a role in that decision-making process are in for a rude surprise. 
And as far as the customer base goes, we're a big industrial company. We sell mostly through channels. So I don't have a lot of personal identifiable data to worry about. But believe me, if I ever catch my bank playing around with my data, I will find a new bank. In terms of you know the applications that you, uh, you know one of the problems a lot of uh, CIOs and uh, operations generally have is uh, getting uh, their employees start using those applications. You know, either they are just not comfortable with the change or the new process that is put in place. What incentives or what processes have you put in place so that everybody who is supposed to be using applications are using it? I, I think, I think the, I, the smartphone, the smart device pull has been the greatest pull ever. People wanted laptops to make their, their, their commute life a little better, to make their home work life balance a little better. The pull on the smart devices is a different pull. And if I had resistance, no, I, I don't think, I would have loved to have deployed 6,000 pad devices to my employee base. Uh, I don't think there's any resistance on the pull side. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's pretty much 100% adoption. Now, let me caveat that. My smart device, that's in the pocket still, is a company smart device. I have not done BYOD for myself, and anything, all that's on here is company stuff. I know there's a lot of people who have movies, terabytes of music, cloud interfaces, and that's another part of the social challenge. What's the correct mix for your business? I, there is no, there is no formulaic solution. So, now there's no resistance. If if anyone knows about resistance to these, I would bet it's it has an age factor. <laughs> Ashwin, we, we you know I had talked about the notion of uh, you know moving from uh, mobile first to mobile only. A lot of the investments in in corporations are starting to focus more on mobile and that's where the investment. Could you talk a bit about that? Because that's, I think, an important uh, kind of trend or tipping point to recognize that uh, new investment is going, going to mobile. No, I mean, that's, that's the point. I mean, if you, if you could roll back, I mean, if you went in, first you had a PC, you had a desktop, the desktop translated into a laptop that became more mobile now, right? And my thing is that more and more people are, we have a segmented user community, whether you're in sales or in marketing, you're using mobile and tablet devices more than, than your laptop. Right, uh, and, and, and I agree while there are both creation devices and consumption devices, uh, you know, a sales force, uh, the sales force is basically consuming information that others create, yeah. right? And for that, you know, when you develop apps, I think it's going to be mobile only, not mobile first. Mm -hmm. Uh, because there's no way of taking it back and there is no value in taking it back. So it's, it's, it's I think, in a case-by-case -case basis. It depends on, on, on the use case that you have. My view is that customer-facing sales and marketing folks are to be treated different from engineering folks. Uh, and you can't put the same recipe that we've conventionally done uh, in the past that every application goes to all of its users. So, no, it's a segmented user community, it's a segmented use case, and, and, and I think we from the IT organization need to understand that this is not a deployment that goes company-wide. And therefore, some of these applications are going to be uh, mobile-only applications. Uh, now, you're moving on to kind of the application architectures. A um, lot of uh, companies are pushing container-based uh, architecture where you can deploy your uh, applications or um, suite of applications in, in a container. Uh, from a trend point of view or acceptably point of view, which architectures are kind of winning out in the market? My, my, my contention, and I'm probably willing to bet some money on this, is that that approach of I'm going to put a container on it and every application is going to be inside that container is probably yesterday's way of thinking. Um, think of it this way, right? Can anybody beat the user experience of using uh, Apple uh, mail client? Uh, Apple has spent enormous amount of time making sure that the, the mail client, the calendar client is perfect. Anybody thinks that they can build something better than that are just fooling themselves. So I think the real thing to do is not worry about containerization. Like I said, everything that is enterprise, whether it is an application, whether it is in a data, needs to be a self-defending entity. So you put an application, it is not running in a container, but at the time of executing of that application, you got to make sure that you are running it at the right context. When you are accessing the data, no matter how the data comes on this device, for example, it comes by email, 
as an attachment but in the regular iOS client but you need to make sure that the, the data is self-defending so I think I'm going to put everybody give a device but take away their the real reason why they brought the device because Apple did a great device and I'm going to take away and giving you this second hand set of tools to do your job is not going to go for too far you got to figure out you keep the user experience but still make it secure that is where I feel the, the enterprise mobility and the industry is going. Yeah. What are your thoughts so, on? So what I would tell you is that, you know, just as we've evolved with the iPad, now it's, it's a more useful device. As you look into the future, the, the problem is going to become more complicated than it is now. Because we have more than one client within the same company, and you have to look at the data as a puzzle. So think about social media and what it does. We just went through that last night, right? So they go out there and they gather up all this data and they, they can tell that you like uh, blue sweaters and white sports cars. You, they can tell that about you. So they're piecing together different parts of a puzzle. And if we're not careful in how we place data on different devices or out there and make available, <coughs> competitors will be able to piece together data. I'm not talking about the easy stuff like, you know, HIPAA requirements where you can't have the person's name and social security number and that kind of thing. That's just too obvious. But what else is out there that they can piece together? So that's going to be a concern in architecture, but of application. Sure. Yeah? Uh, Sean, final question. Um, and the number of entrepreneurs uh, in, in the room who are um, willing to take a crack at tech <laughs> problems. Um, you know, are there cer certain burning questions or uh, issues or problems that you have that you would like to see solutions to uh, in, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months? I would be very happy if someone would not make me their QA department. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's talk about this for a minute. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump from wireless to the cloud. When the cloud arrived on the scene, all the CIOs put their hand up and said, too hard. And they went away and they fixed that. And then we put our hands up and we said, not secure. And they went away and they fixed that. And then we said, we don't understand identity management. And they went away and fixed that. So I think the most important thing for those of you who are IT practitioners inside large companies is put your hand up and tell people what you need. For those of you who are in the product development groups, j please listen. We hear, I see a lot of presentations and I see a lot of features and I go, well that's interesting, I wonder who on earth wants that? And when I ask the sales staff or the, pres you know, the sales support staff that are presenting to me, a lot of times they have no idea. And I go, it must have been your engineers because I can't think of any use for it. So, IT people, you have a commitment to your suppliers to be vocal about what you need, what you need it for, and what it's worth to you. And if you don't play your part of the game, then we all fail. And for the vendors, if you don't start listening more, you're going to create an awful lot of features. The good news is you can build them really fast. The bad news is this man here wants you to verticalize your, your functions. Sales is different from support, which is different from engineering, which is different. In the past, we couldn't afford that. The future is going to be full of little tiny vertical apps, probably mobile first and mobile only, right? But they serve one group and they do a really, really great job of it. They're not Swiss Army knives, right? So that's my, my opinion. Don't build any more Swiss Army knives. And uh, IT people, you gotta, you got to step up to the bar and play your part of the role. Well, thanks, uh, and thanks everyone. Uh, we run out of clock, and uh, I hope you got some insights out of the panel. Oh, uh, please join me yeah. in thanking the panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Chair.